Hello and welcome to the PCM Tech Help Show. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain, and tonight, is Apple going to finally augment reality in their next iPhone and thus make reality better? That's one of the questions we're going to be talking about, of course. Of course, the new Samsung Galaxy S4 is now touting amazing new hardware. This hardware is so amazing that it actually costs more than Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy S3 when it first came out. We'll touch on that a little bit as well. And for those of you who are enthusiasts on privacy, Tom Prokes, we're also going to talk about CISPA, which is a big brother of a policy. But thankfully, we got companies like Reddit and uh, who else? Who else we got here? Craigslist and 30,000 other websites fighting their way to make sure CISPA doesn't pass. Also, Microsoft decided they're going to take some jabs at the Samsung Galaxy S3, which is semi-humorous because it is Microsoft taking jabs. Also, is live broadcasting finally dead? That's a good question that we can ask and talk a little bit more about because there's new information out on internet usage. But let's not forget another thing on tonight's episode is the major WordPress installation, which I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to build websites, and this will give you your foot in the door for managing and building your WordPress website right from the comforts of your own home. So we'll see you guys tonight. That's right, we're the PCM Tech Help Show, and this is where we have a little bit of fun talking tech with everybody out there in the YouTube universe. Now, if you guys were just joining in, PCM Tech Help Show has been going strong for about 34 episodes. Today's March 19th, 2013. We're trying to get things kind of professional here, going a little solid on a solid platform. And if you don't know where to find the show, you can find it essentially at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash live. And we talk about all kinds of things here, including, but not limited to, basic tech tutorials and we've moved in a little bit about news a little bit about technology but there's a chat room there and the chat room is my mind hive that's where all the fun people hang out outside of the main show and we have our conversations about what's going on in the real world which believe it or not there are still things going on out there in the real world now i tried some things out today that didn't seem to work out too well for me hang on let me pause this so it that way it doesn't play my video. And uh, I tried to play a video and show an image on my screen so that people could see on YouTube that this Hangout was broadcasting live. Unfortunately, that hasn't quite worked out for me yet. But don't worry, YouTubers. I know 12,000 of you, you're mo my core audience is out there on YouTube. I will try to get a way to update you guys about this feed when it goes live. But today, let's talk about augmented reality because... To be honest with you, Apple, this is a very exciting thing for me, Apple has finally gotten a patent for the future, or augmented reality. For those of you who don't know what augmented reality is, it's the really cool thing like on Minority Report, where they got they got the little the eyeglass. It's kind of like similar to what Google's talking about doing with the Google Glass, where you look at an object, and it, it goes into the camera, and it displays to you, through a HUD, or a user interface, information about that object. And Apple has apparently gotten a patent for this, completely approved of, and they actually applied for it back in 2010. So the question is, are they going to be doing anything with this augmented reality system in their new Apple iPhone? I don't know. I think it would be cooler on the Google Glasses myself, because the Google Glasses are actually, you know, on your face already. So being able to look at an object and get information on that object would be quite awesome. So augmented reality is kind of a big technology associated with, I think, wearable tech. Wearable tech is going to be a big thing this year. If you haven't been paying attention, of course, Apple's talking about releasing their new Apple iWatch, which they haven't really, they've been kind of hush-hush about it other than the fact that it's a watch. And, of course, you have Google's Glass, Google Glass. Uh, new LED watches and things like that are also coming out, or OLED bendable screens. All this technology is going to make augmented well, not augmented, but wearable technology, very exciting. And put that in, in the hands along with augmented reality. And, and now we're talking about true sci-fi fun. True sci-fi excitement. sci fi is what we're going to coin that word for today. sci fi the word of the day, everybody. sci fi Pay attention to your sci fi -ment. Lots of exciting things going on. Augmented reality, very cool idea. Would you use it? Would you, pull, do you, would you hold up your phone to an object and just kind of get... You know, leave it in the comments below and then or talk about it in the chat room. Discuss amongst yourselves. Coffee talk. Coffee talk for the tech guys. Now, the uh, Samsung Galaxy S4, apparently it's at $236 per unit. I'm going to talk about some specs here on the Samsung Galaxy S4. I think it sounds pretty sweet. I'm not a 
Apple or Mac or Android fanboy by any means. But to be honest with you, I have an iPhone 5. I love my iPhone 5, actually. I'm not going to lie. I do love my iPhone 5. But when when a company comes out like Samsung and they release the Galaxy S3, and, and I look at it, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty sweet. And I, I'm like, okay, I had an Android before. I like my iPhone, but... But what are we gonna, what are we going to come out with next? Okay, it's it's pretty sweet. But then they come out with something like this, this Galaxy S4, and they got you know 16 gigs embedded, just like their standard iPhone. But of course, it supports the SD cards up to 128 gigabytes, pretty much right out of the box, guaranteed at minimum. Uh, they haven't specified exactly what they're going to be doing with that yet. Uh, of course, there's two gigs of RAM, and they got a five-inch 1920 by 1080p AMO LED AMOLED display the first of its kind because AMOLED has always been very difficult to get those pixels crunched together. Now this is just overkill really 1920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080 is like beyond retina display okay. Retina display is is really high I mean of course it's not as high as retina display but it's beyond the necessity of a screen that's five inches okay. The human eye can only see so much resolution and the retina display, while great on a iPad, because the iPad screen is bigger, uh, you're not going to notice a difference probably between the retina on the iPhone 5 and the new 1920 by 1080 Super AMOLED that's going to be included in this 5-inch uh, Samsung Galaxy S4 right out of the box. Right out of the box. Pretty awesome stuff. They got their own new quad-core processor called the Quan. Qualcomm or the Samsung, I'm sorry, Exynos 5 Octa. That sounds pretty fancy, doesn't it? 13 megapixel camera. Everybody likes that. Possibly contains an Intel front end for wireless. We don't know about that yet, of course. That's all speculation at this point. The nice thing about the AMO LED as well is you're going to have better battery life because it runs on the OLED technology. Always fun. And uh, I mean, $236 to manufacture each of each one of these bad boys, which is up from 205 from the Samsung Galaxy S3. So all gloves are off, Samsung. The war has begun. Samsung is coming out in full force, and they're really trying to hit, hit them with a punch, really kind of hit them in the face with it hard because of the negative feedback that people have received regarding the iPhone. And the iPhone attempted to do some cheap jabs at them, and I think uh, I think Samsung is coming out of the squeaky clean at the moment. So I'm kind of excited to see what's going to happen in the mobile phone market. It's an exciting time for us geeks, okay? this we're, we're, we got augmented reality being possible. We've got this awesome Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S4 coming out, which, by the way, has other really cool proximity sensors in this. Listen to this. It's got geomagnetic and proximity sensors, as well as an accelerometer, gyroscope, barometer, and Samsung added, added a new infrared gesture sensor, so you can actually do gesturing for it, and a humidity and temperature sensor, so it can actually supposedly do things like health tracking or, um, what is it, uh, physical condition tracking and things like that. And they've also got some really, really cool uh, ideas for the eye scan. They got an eye scan thing where actually it'll do your eye. You can move your eyes around and the screen will move as well. I don't, I don't know what people will use this stuff for, but it's all in there. It's all in the next Samsung Galaxy. You know, I didn't think I'd get excited about a Samsung phone ever, honestly. I've been following this technology for, for years. I, I never thought I would ever get excited about a Samsung phone. And you know what? Galaxy S4 is probably going to be where it's at. Kind of excited to see what they do with that. I'm actually very interested to see. Now we're going to talk about CISPA. For those of you who don't know what CISPA is, it's essentially a proposition made by the government. Yes, we love the government on this show. I'm not going to speak out openly against the government. I just think they're irresponsible all the time. I just get tired of it. Okay, it's it frustrating. I don't think I'm the only one. But let's just say the government proposes this bill, and it's a way for businesses and companies supposedly to share information for our security. If the government historically comes out and says that it wants to do anything for our security, I want people to have a big red flag raised because security is a great way to push through a lot of anti-privacy uh, legislation and CISPA in particular is one that can be definitely interpreted as a non-friendly 
policy for people of us, you know, people like us who are individuals. And uh, let's just say we don't want big major corporations and big government helping each other out all the time. You know, who, who's helping us out? Who's looking out for us? That's what I want to know. You re- am I really that say I'm not that concerned about their security because you know what? There's something called the free market and there is an interest in keep, keeping our information protected without the need for government involvement and that's called if you get our stuff stolen, we'll stop buying from you. So call me old fashioned. But that's what I believe, and I don't think I don't think CISPA is a solution. But anyways, thirty thousand other websites. If you guys are interested, thirty thousand other websites, along with Reddit and Craigslist, are flying the flag of op- of opposition to the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, which is CISPA, uh, and that'll be happening over the next month. Okay, and they're going to have this big banner. It says CISPA is back. It's right there. See that CISPA is back. Okay, this article was courtesy of Reddit from Alex Fitzpatrick, but this image says CISPA is back and people are going to be flying this banner so you can learn more and uh, you can tell the Congress to defend privacy. And uh, so that's that's a pretty good thing. I think you guys should pay extra attention to that when you see it coming up on banners. Make sure you enter your zip code and do what you can do to contribute to making sure our, our information and internet stays out of the hands of those people. Microsoft apparently is attacking Samsung Galaxy S3, making fun of the camera on it. The Samsung Galaxy S3 camera does leave a lot to be desired, so kind of an interesting attack, though, coming from Microsoft, who is incapable of making a solid phone. Uh, But they did show a point-to-point comparison of the resolution of the camera from the Microsoft Lumia and the Samsung Galaxy S3. And, of course, the Lumia looked better. But, hey, Microsoft, let's compare apps. No, let's compare hardware. Let's compare some things that matter to most of us, other than just the camera. If I just wanted a camera, I'd go buy a camera. And then we do a side-by-side comparison of the Microsoft Lumia camera along with a over-the-counter digital camera. Then we'll see who wins, okay? So not a very good comparison there, Microsoft. Your anti-everybody attacks lately haven't really been doing much for you, I don't think. And uh, right now, we can do side-by-side comparisons of your Windows 8 operating system and just about any other operating system that's out there. And I think it would probably be a fair comparison at this point, wouldn't it? Something to think about. So is traditional broadcasting dead? This was another one. I like this article. It's from Business Insider. It's a chart of the day where the money is going in the media, social, in the media business. Um, the annual percentage, percentage change in revenue for media platforms has been a huge shift from printable medium, you know, like magazines and newspapers, all the way over to internet. Internet's the big, big one on the chart. This is at businessinsider.com. And uh, you'll, you'll see on there that there's an online gap. It's about this huge, and it's killing local TV now. Okay, so local TV's in second place, cable's in third, then you got network TV, which is way down here, little network TV. And uh, I love this. I love seeing articles like this. Traditional broadcasting, it's been a long time coming. They've abused their privileges for quite some time. That's why I love the Internet. It's open. A lot of people can talk about it. People go where the information is good or desired or in a lot of cases honest, but network television, by the time you see an end product on network television, it's very saturated, it's very watered down, it's very difficult to get something real out of network television. So me and my buddy, my camera guy, we always talk about this, you know, when will traditional broadcasting be dead? And I don't know if it'll ever be completely dead, but uh, right now there's a huge shift of us internet guys moving to the internet because let's be honest with you, we get our entertainment elsewhere now and we're done with the traditional broadcasting model. Pay attention. Start embracing this technology. Hulu is the best thing you guys got going for you. We need something a little more tight than that. Let's make it happen, guys, because if you don't, this stuff's going to catch up with you as soon as the baby boomers stop watching traditional television. It's not going to be pretty. This is another cool one, actually. Google made animated GIFs a part of their search. So you can actually go to the Google search, Google image searching, and do a Google image search, and then you can actually do through your image search for animated GIFs now. Why did they do this? I think it's because of Google+. We love Google+, because to be honest with you, Google+, lets us put animated GIFs in our feed, and they are quite hilarious. You wouldn't think it'd be fun, 
uh, but it, it's, it's one of the most exciting things about Google Plus is the ridiculous animated GIF animations. For those of you who don't know what animated GIFs are, they're essentially images that flip. It's like a flipbook image. You know, you'd write down a whole bunch of pictures, then you'd flip it through a flipbook, and it's like usually really choppy and kind of silly. But uh, it's awesome. We love it. We love it. This is awesome news for those of us who are on Google Plus. You can now find ridiculous animated GIFs on your Google searches, and I, for one, will be doing extensive GIF research in all of my spare time. Very excited about that. Very excited about the animated GIFs. Very excited. There's some other uh, news stories going on here, but I'm not going to go into those in too much detail here unless we got some extra time at the end of the show. Now, PCM Tech Help Show does broadcast daily, Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And what we try to do here is we try to talk about basic things, te basically anything tech, anything goes. And uh, what I'll do is I'll do uh, basic news overviews. We'll talk about what's going on in the news. And then we'll go into a, base, uh, a very advanced topic or basic topic. Something a little more focused I'll do a screencast on. And in this, in this case, we're going to be talking about WordPress. Installing WordPress is actually very easy to do. So let me go ahead and do my screen share here so you guys can see what I got going on here. And uh, WordPress is historically a very complicated software package. But uh, it's kind of become easier over the years. And uh, we're going to start by downloading an application called XAMPP. Now, this particular video is going to be installing XAMPP, which is a development environment. It's not, in, it's not intended for you to host your website online yet. But what you can do is you can install WordPress locally on your machine, and then you can build your website offline on your development environment, and then you can call a company or transfer that website to a professional web host for less than $100 a year. This is actually the way I built my website, PCMTechHelp.com. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure you swing by the community page at PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community and uh, join the community there. And we will actually help you, help you guys out with WordPress. I've, I've used it for quite some time, so hopefully we'll be able to get you fully taken care of there in a good way. So let's go. Let's go here to my desktop. And let's see what we can get going for you guys here. Hopefully... Hopefully we won't chew up my computer too much. It looks like I'm uh, running a little low on bandwidth. <laughs> so I'm going to minimize this. Maybe I'll have some luck here if I just minimize that. Maybe that'll help me. Yeah, it did. Actually, frame rate came up here a little bit. So let's go to your browser. And we're going to look for a website called xamp.org. And uh, xamp.org is essentially XAMPP is it's, it's Apache MySQL PHP server all in one it's a development environment that's designed for web, for web developers and it allows you to do a full installation of a web environment right on your computer with ease I'm gonna scroll down to XAMPP for Windows and I'm gonna select that because this is the one I want to download in particular on this video and then we're gonna go down to the download section and we just want XAMPP. We don't need to do the portable light and we don't need to do the add-ons. We're gonna just do XAMPP and I am going to download the installer which is right here and the installer is basically an automated installer. You can manually install this if you like but I'm gonna just do a standard installer and it'll bring me to SourceForge which is one of the most reliable websites for downloading files and uh, that will allow me to actually start the download. Now, it's actually looking like this may take some time. Yeah, I didn't really anticipate this in advance, now that I'm thinking about it, because I'm streaming live, which means I may run into an issue here with bandwidth. Probably should have downloaded this before I started the show. Looks like I'm starting to kick in here, though. Awesome. <laughs> Not going to have to distract you guys for too long here in order to keep this thing going. But... Uh, XAMPP is a development environment. Like I said, don't use it to host your own websites professionally, okay? Because it's insecure, because it's a development environment, it keeps a lot of the packages that are insecure always activated, and therefore you're not really in a good position to make sure you're not going to get infected or have people drop viruses on your websites or things like that. So not a very good idea to, to essentially go into developing an environment in XAMPP and not... Ah, this is going to take a longer time than I wished. Really wish I had thought about this in advance. This part here. You know, hindsight's 2020. Let me answer some of your questions while we wait. Looks like a lot of people are talking here at the show. Good news, good news. Glad to see that. 
Welcome back, Steve Wheeler, Holy Boy, J. Ray K., Craft Kick. Welcome to the show, Teddy Puligzi from Facebook. Welcome to the show. T Teddy, Teddy, welcome to the show. Saw you posting on my uh, Facebook page earlier today, actually, which was quite nice. Um, Steve Wheeler, welcome back. Keith Donnelly, hey, from Ireland, wow, worldwide, getting all over the world. Welcome back, Kazuki, Russell, Craft Kick, Teddy, again. <laughs> So it's pretty awesome. Hopefully not everybody's getting this echo. Hopefully it wasn't just me. Okay, cool. It's not just me. All right, Teddy. Yeah, Teddy was uh, actually asking me earlier about uh, who I use to do my website. Since this is on topic, actually, with our topic for tonight. Um, basically, what I decided to do with uh, the PCM Tech Help Show is I, I, I opted to do a full WordPress installation uh, for the environment. I've been working with WordPress for about four or five years and the great thing about WordPress is how flexible and versatile it is. So PCMTechHelp.com is actually powered by the WordPress platform. And I started with, out with a really junky free theme and my hosting was was through Bluehost. I did make that initial investment. I went out and bought web hosting from Bluehost.com for about $90 for a year. Okay, That's dirt cheap in my opinion. It had a one-click install for web hosting, and then I could just go right into my WordPress and start, you know, building my website. And it's just a really great tool. And so I went out to the internet and I downloaded and installed a, um, a theme. I just Googled free WordPress themes, went through a whole bunch of them, hated most of them, uh, finally found one that I really loved, and then I took that WordPress theme and actually rolled with it. And uh, the very first release of the PCM Tech Help Show, which was PC Michiana at the time, uh, was completely powered by WordPress. And uh, it was an interesting experience. It was very, very ugly. If you go back and watch my earlier videos, you'll actually see the earlier releases of PCMichiana.com. And Teddy was asking me what they do for what he does, or uh, what they should do. He or she, I think it's, yeah, I think it's, I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't see the picture. It's too tiny. They said that they were uh, trying to build their own website business on WordPress, and they were wondering where to get started and what to do. And uh, really, WordPress is an awesome product. If you give me one minute, I was going to go upstairs and grab a book for you guys. I actually meant to grab this earlier, so give me one minute. Please stand by. The show will continue more, continue more momentarily. Talk amongst yourselves, pcmtechhelp.com slash live. I want to grab a book for you guys that you guys can see. It's WordPress. Be right back. I have returned. Did you miss me? Not me. Me neither. Me neither. Okay. What I wanted to talk about here was WordPress, the missing manual. Now, this book I went out and purchased at Barnes and Noble. It was approximately $29.99. Now, I've been reading over this book because I wanted to do an extensive kind of guide here on the actual YouTube channel on WordPress, and it has all kinds of information on, in it. And to be honest with you, there's no real good way outside of classes in school to learn something thoroughly and learn what you need to learn, you know, a real foundation without books. I wish I could say that there was a way to do it. I wish I could say there's a shortcut method to it. I wish I could say, go to my website, watch my videos, and it will teach you everything you need to know. But a written reference is extremely important when it comes to doing any kind of development at all in, in no matter what you're doing so WordPress the missing manual I strongly recommend you look at, look for it it's it's on Amazon uh, it's by O'Reilly O'Reilly books they do an awesome job with books and the ISBN number for those of you guys wondering what it is it is 978-1-449-30984-8 -4 -4 you can go back and replay that on the video if you want to later or ask me at the actual community page 
what you guys think. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited about doing some advanced topics on WordPress. But essentially, at the beginning of this, they're going to have you do all similar things that we're going to be talking about in today's episode. So let's see where we're at here. Looks like we're getting close. My internet's way faster than this, by the way. I'm just not used to downloading. Not used to downloading, installing, and updating software while doing a live stream. That's going to be something that gets fixed in future episodes, of course. And let's go ahead and go back through. Let's go here. Let's go back here to my actual website here. I'm going to go to, and next, next after we download XAMPP, we want to go to WordPress. Just go ahead and Google WordPress, and we're going to actually download a full copy. There's two different instances of WordPress, okay? There's WordPress.com hosting, or WordPress, dot, basically WordPress.org, I should say, where you can register a website. I'm sorry, WordPress.com, where you can register a website, and they will host it for you. That's a great resource for beginners, but it's very limited. WordPress.com, on the other hand, is us installing a full copy of WordPress on our computers. This is the full-blown open source package you can use for business use, and this is where you download it from. This is WordPress.org, okay? Now, don't mix this up, like I said, with WordPress.com, and WordPress.com is something completely different, but it's the same. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's different because it's basically for bloggers. It's a free blogging software hosted by them. So if you're on a budget, try WordPress.com first. Uh, and, and I personally, I like to just bypass that. I like to jump straight to WordPress.org, get the full package because I like the full capabilities right out of the box. So when I'm at WordPress.org, I just click download WordPress 3.5.1 and then uh, I can click download. This one, thankfully, is only 5.2 megabytes, so it won't take nearly as long. I can click download WordPress 3.5.1 again and click save, and then it'll start downloading that one as well. So hopefully I don't suck down my bandwidth here so much that we can't even see what's going on anymore. But uh, get a book. Get a book, people. If you're thinking about doing WordPress at all or any kind of developing, there's no real good way to do it outside of getting a book and getting your head in it and just starting things out. Uh, and remember, it's like anything else, it takes time. It's a process. You're not going to just sit there and all of a sudden, no WordPress. You know, you're know, you going to have to break stuff. You're going to have to keep trying. Eventually, you'll learn it. Uh, that's how I learned everything that I know. And, and even now, there's a lot of things about WordPress I don't even know. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So XAMPP is finally done installing. So let's go ahead and get this road on the show. In the bottom left-hand corner, I'm going to click it to open it, and right here it gives me the security warning, and I'm going to select Run to actually run my XAMPP installation. It tells me that my user account control is deactivated, and it tells me please make sure that the user account control is basically the security control in Windows. I'll just click OK, select Next, and I'm going to be installing XAMPP, which is the Start menu and the desktop icon. The servers, which include included in XAMPP, are you get an Apache web server, you get a MySQL database server, you get a FileZilla FTP server, which isn't in essential in web hosting, but it is included, a Mercury mail server, if you want to host your own mail serving, and Tomcat, which I've never actually used. Never used any Tomcat. Program, programming language capabilities included are PHP and Perl scripting. PHP is essential for WordPress. It's built off PHP. In tools, you have PHP My Admin, which is an administration tool for your MySQL databases, Webalizer, and Fake SendMail. I'm going to go ahead and install everything, and it installs by default to your local directory slash XAMPP. Okay, and I'll click Install. And essentially, the installation for XAMPP is, essential, is just it extracting all of the files into that local directory on your computer and, and right now it's just extracting them all into that uh, c colon slash xamp folder so if i actually pull up my explorer right now if i haven't killed my computer completely so far if i go to c desktops okay and then i go to the computer c Go to XAMPP, it's right here, and it's actually populating this folder right now. That's pretty much all the installation's doing. I can actually watch the files grow here. If I go through here. 
And so it's it's essentially that's all it is. So like if you did the the actual zip package download from xamp.org, you could technically just extract all those files into a folder by itself, and and that would allow you to actually run them all manually from there as well. So. This installation usually doesn't take this long. Again, this is because I'm streaming in HD now. Sorry about that, guys. It's a, it's kind of just a, it's, it's a necessary evil. I had to make a compromise at some point, or I had to choose whether I was going to make a compromise or not. I wanted to either go HD so you guys could actually see what I was doing, or I had to keep on Google Plus Hangouts where you could never see my screen. And I want to be able to show you guys what we're talking about here on the show. So it's really, it's kind of useless if I don't, in my opinion. Because you need to be able to follow what I'm saying. I would hope that that would be more beneficial than the whole issue. So uh, the, the whole streaming and, and bandwidth wait, wait time issue. And one of the cool things about this is that the show is available at the YouTube channel, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube after the live broadcast so you can skip over content what i'd like to do and i have to work with my video producer on this chris keyworth christopher keyworth the director and uh, he's going to help me work on cutting up each video each live stream into different segments that way you guys can actually you know watch just those segments after the live stream has shown and still kind of keep up realistically with what's really going on in the show so my poor processor is getting so abused right now. Actually, what's funny is I got a, I got a little dashboard here. It says I'm at 99% usage. Amazingly, still streaming at 24 frames per second on full HD. Probably a little choppy for you guys right now if you're actually doing the full HD. But we're getting there. We are getting there. Let's see what else you guys got going on here. This is probably the longest part of the show. Looks like there's a lot of talking going on in the channel. And I'm going to, of course, leave the questions for the end. So hang on to your questions. Wait, leave, Keep them for the end of the show. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go into those in greater detail. Looks like Kazuki said the PCM Tech Help community is reachable via the website. That's true. If you go to PCMTechHelp.com, there's a link right at the top that says join the community. And it'll bring you right to the page. And uh, there's a lot of people looking like they're interested in it, which is cool. Andy C., I think I know who that guy is. He likes my chair. Thank you. It's a very nice chair. You must have jumped in right when I walked away to get that book. So, we're still going through our installation. Again, the XAMP installation is just basically a file extraction, so there's nothing real fancy going on there. So let me just see if I got any of your questions here. Looks like that might take a, just a couple more minutes. So let's see how we're doing. Does anyone watch it in HD? Looks like Kazuki's watching it in HD. Has anybody here used WordPress? I'm a little curious. Post that right here in the comments. If you guys are watching it now live, it's pcmtechhelp.com forward slash live. I'm curious if anybody here uses WordPress or has ever installed it themselves. Craftkick says he made his first post in the Community Plus page. That's awesome. Very cool. Looks like Teddy is a she. Sorry the picture was tiny. I had trouble seeing it. <laughs> no offense. Just cool. I have the coolest community. You guys, I, the, the community has just, just been going crazy today. That's one of the one of the most rewarding things about this show so far is when I wasn't doing the live stream, I had no community. You know, I had no engagement. I had really nobody. People were all takers. You know, it's really kind of cool having a community that'll help each other out. Uh, people are going there asking questions and. And they're helping them out. Helping them out. I, you know, it's great for me because it, it frees my, frees up my time to, to keep making content. So it's kind of a cool thing. Looks like Kazuki uses WordPress. That's awesome. Looks like Steve Wheeler says his brother's website is WordPress is one of the biggest actual website platforms in the market. Looks like we're still a little bit behind here. Oh, looks like it's speeding up. You know, if it'd be kind of good if let me actually switch back to just camera because if I do that, actually my processing power kicks up. Because what happens is I'm using less bandwidth now because, uh, wow, that's going way faster. Because I'm not sharing my screen. Should have just done that 10 minutes ago. Or 5 minutes ago. Alright, we're rolling around. We're rolling along here now, guys. But uh, let's see what else we got going on here at the chat room. Chat room, chat room, chat room. Oh, I could just talk about other news articles. 
other news articles. Beat Hunter said, I tried out WordPress when I first saw your tutorial on it. I never really experimented with it, though. It's a great platform. Uh, it can actually it can make you an amazing web developer without knowing any code. Uh, that's actually what scares web developers about WordPress is that WordPress is so powerful that you can actually build a full website without ever even writing a line of code. So that's really a scary concept to people who make a living building websites. So uh, it, it's definitely worth checking out if you've never looked at it before and you're, you've considered going into web development because I can in an afternoon, or not an afternoon, in probably two or three days, I can build an entire WordPress website that's very comprehensive. It can have an embedded shopping cart or it can have uh, embedded video. It can have a complete professional layout and design, a complete photography studio website. I mean, you can do all kinds of amazing, highly advanced things in a very short period of time if you know what you're looking for. With a good WordPress theme, you can pretty much do almost anything. I mean, it's crazy what you can do with WordPress. And I will show you what you can do with WordPress here in a couple seconds because it looks like it's almost done, everybody. Okay. Here's our screen back. Configure XAMPP with AWK for Windows NT. Done. Have fun. Completing XAMPP. Okay, we're going to select Finish. You can manage all the service, servers or services with XAMPP Control Panel. Do you want to start the Control Panel now? Yes, I do. Give me that Control Panel so we can take a look at what we can do here on my desktop. Okay, I'm going to leave this open here because I'm actually going to look at these files a little bit later. And what I need to do here is hopefully get this sucker running. And we may run into issues, and I kind of, I'm kind of hoping we do. If we run into issues, we can resolve them live, hopefully, because a lot of people run into issues when they're running their installer here. So I'm going to start with uh, running my Apache server. Now, this is my web server. If I click Start, it'll attempt to start the service, and it looks like it started. That's why it's green. Okay, now I can, I can actually test this Apache service. Very easy to do. Now I've officially turned my computer by turning on this Apache service before I test it. I want you to know I've officially turned my computer into a web server. Okay, so what I can do is I can open up a browser and I can type in localhost into the actual browser search bar and press enter. And that will check my local computer for a website, okay? And now since my website, my, my computer is a web server, thanks to XAMPP, it gives me a web, set, web page. It says XAMPP. So that tells me the web server is working. Now if I go back to this control panel and I stop XAMPP and I try to load that page again, I get nothing which is what you would expect. Because now it's trying to check my local computer for a website, and my local computer does not actually serve websites. So we're gonna start that again, initiate the Apache server, and I'm gonna go ahead and click, instead of localhost this time, we're gonna type in 127.0.0.1. This is the local IP, it's, it's called a, a basically a looping IP address that will redirect the browser to the local computer. And it tells it, it's, it's the exact same thing as localhost, but localhost is a domain, is a name. Basically, it's a DNS name, uh, not DNS name, but a domain name for that service or this computer. And if I press enter, I get the exact same thing. So localhost is just a word that represents those numbers. But this is an IP address just like any other IP address on the internet. And I've essentially created a local web host that allows me to access it. Now, I will not be able to access this website from the internet unless I set up my router to forward requests for browsers to my computer. Because remember, the hosting is being done locally on my computer. So that's something very important for you to remember because a lot of people, the first mistake they make is thinking, I've installed XAMPP, can I all of a sudden access my, web access my website from the internet? Well, there's a little more advanced configuration that needs to be done for that to take place. But our XAMPP server is working, so I'm gonna click English, and here we go, XAMPP for Windows. Welcome to XAMPP for Windows. And XAMPP's great because on the left-hand side, it gives us a whole bunch of tools we can use to check whether things are working or not. 
For our WordPress installation, we want to make sure that PHP is functioning properly. So there's a PHP info link right here on the left hand side. You go ahead and select that and you want to make sure that something pops up here. Okay, otherwise it's just going to be a blank page. It's not going to render. It tells me the version I'm running and it basically has a whole bunch of information. Okay, this stuff isn't important at the moment. We just want to make sure that information shows up. So we've built a web server and we now know that our web server, our Apache server, supports PHP. PHP is necessary to install XAMPP. Now the next thing we need is a database server, that's MySQL. Now if I click PHP MyAdmin, we're going to run into a problem. And that is, there's no database. Well that's because we didn't actually start our database server yet. So we got to go back to our XAMPP control panel and we have a MySQL server as well. So we're talking about two different server technologies going on here. You have a web server and a database server. Okay, These are both needed to be running in order to do a successful WordPress installation on your computer. So we're going to go ahead and click start right here and the light turns green. Always a good thing. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to try PHP MyAdmin again and see what we get. We found it. Okay, this is the great thing about XAMPP. All this stuff is pre-configured. It's, it's an awesome tool. Now, I, with PHP Admin, this, to, this has actually grown substantially over the years. PHP MyAdmin used to be kind of a nightmare to work with, but it's very user-friendly now. We need to create a database for our website. Because when we install WordPress, we need to have all the data for that website to go into a database. Okay, that's why MySQL is necessary to install WordPress. So let me go to databases here, and I'm going to create a database called My First Website. Okay, and let's use some capital letters My First Website. And I'm going to select Create. Okay, it says My Database First, for database My First Website has been created. It will show up on the left, down here at the bottom under databases. And on the left hand side, it'll be in all lowercase, but it will show up there as well. And I can select it, but we're not going to do anything else in PHP My, uh, My Admin. That's all you need to do with the database, okay? A lot of people freak out when I show them this. They're like, oh, I got to build a database. Oh my God. No, WordPress will build it for you. But you need to create a database so that you can do your WordPress installation, okay? So, what have we got going on here? We've got a web server which allows your computer to serve websites to web browsers and then we have a database server that allows your web server to access data okay so there's basically three tiers going on here so it, it sounds complicated it's not really that complicated once you start to work with it a lot you start to understand really how these things work together now when I go to my browser and I go to the local host. We're going back to my web server here. Local host. This is a website being served by the Apache server. Okay, That website's actually located in a folder on my computer. That folder is where we're going to install WordPress. So, open up Explorer. You go into local disk. And then go back to XAMPP, which is where we installed our development environment. And you want to go to Apache. No, yeah, you do. You want to go to Apache because this is our web server. Remember Apache. And then it has a folder called, and you're going to fall in love with this folder. It's called, well, it was called. Nope, they moved it. Okay, it's not in the Apache folder. Ignore that. I never said it. They moved the Apache folder for some reason. They moved it outside of Apache. They put the htdocs folder. So we go to computer local disk, XAMPP, and then we want to do htdocs. This is where your websites are installed. Okay, You can have as many websites as you want on your web server. This is the one I access, this XAMPP. So when you look up here, localhost slash XAMPP, I'm in actually localhost, which is this folder, slash XAMPP, this folder. So I'm going to create a website here called, or a new folder here called My First Website. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to do our WordPress installation in this website folder. Okay, so we're building a website for this. 
Hopefully you guys are following all this. Remember that the video will be live at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash live if you need to look back on it for reference. But uh, it, once you've done it once, you get really comfortable with it after that. I'm going to pull up that WordPress download I got earlier today. And it's just a folder. Okay, see that? WordPress. That's it. It's just a folder. I'm going to open up my other folder for my first website like I have here. Let's go into this WordPress folder and we want to click, hold shift, and we want to highlight everything in this folder, okay? Then all you have to do is drag it over to and copy it over to your My First Website folder. You've actually officially at this point installed WordPress, okay? I mean, you've installed it, so it's actually located on your server. So in order to try to avoid too much confusion, because this, is, it's, it's, this isn't simple stuff, guys. It, you, it gets simple after you've done it a few times, but it, it's not simple to grasp the first time you do it. But what we need to do is we need to access this My First Website folder on our web server now so we can actually start building our website. So we're going to go to localhost here. Instead of going to slash xamp, we're going to go to, you, can you guess it? Can you guess what it is? My first website because now we're accessing the my first website folder in this htdocs folder right here instead of the xamp folder so i'm going to press enter and it pops up with the initialization of the wordpress installation this initialization says there doesn't seem to be a wp-config file this i need this before we can get started need more help we got it you can actually automatically create the configuration file by clicking the create button. So you create the configuration file and boom, configuration file has been created. The rest of the WordPress installation goes by typically like a breeze. What they're gonna tell you here now is you need your database name, which we remember we named our database my first website. Your database user database username, the default username and password for the XAMP server is root R O O T password is blank there's I mean literally it's blank there's nothing in there so you have that the database host is you your computer so local host in a table prefix this is optional but you can leave it default so I wouldn't just don't even play around with it for your first installation so let's go ahead and click let's go my database name wasn't WordPress it was my first website Username for my database was root, like I said, that's the default one for MySQL. Password is blank. The database host is already set to localhost. They already assume you're doing it locally. And the table prefix, I'm gonna leave default at WP underscore. I'm gonna click submit. All right, Sparky, you've made it through this part of the installation. WordPress can now communicate with your database. If you are ready, it's time to run the install. So click run the install. Now we're building my website. So I'm going to name the website my first website. My username, I'll just say Craig Chamberlain. Password, I'm going to put in a really crappy password here. My email. And for privacy, it lets you keep the website from being indexed by search engines. But who wants to do that these days? We all want to be found. Select install WordPress. Success. I'm gonna go ahead and save the password. It gives me the option for Chrome for that. And I'm gonna click login. I'm greeted with my WP login screen here. It automatically put my password in there since I saved it, but otherwise you might just have to enter your username and password again. I'm gonna go ahead and select remember me and click login. And we've done it. We have officially installed WordPress. You'll notice some interesting things here after installing WordPress. Now remember, this video just covers the installation. I know we've only got 10 minutes left. Uh, we'll go into more advanced subjects on WordPress at a later time. Like I said, I'm gonna be using this book for that, for when we decide to do that. Um, but uh, essentially, at this point, you can look at all the things on the left. You can go to posts, you can create new blog posts, media, pages, and all this stuff. It's, it's way too much to go into detail right now. But first, I just want to view the site. So in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to go to my first website, and I'm going to choose Visit Site. And there it is. That's the default template for WordPress. 
It's got a default post, some default, a default post, some default pages. If I click on them, it opens up different pages. It's got some default sidebar action going on over here. It's got a default search box. It's got my name of my website, and we're pretty much good to go. It went, it went through without a hitch. Now, a lot of people can run into issues with this XAMPP control panel. Um, if you do, a lot of times it interferes with Skype because Skype actually uses port 80 as well, so you have to disable Skype. That's a very common issue. Uh, but a lot of times people will reboot their computer and, the, and they'll forget to start these again. If you check this box on the left here to install them as a service, see here on the left you got these X's, they'll actually start on boot up rather than you starting them manually. Personally, since I'm a developer, I don't like to leave things running all the time. I will open up this control panel and start these when I'm doing web design. But if you're really kind of going to be doing it a lot for like two weeks straight, you can just install them as a service and they'll start every time you start your computer. That's a great way to kind of resolve that issue. So that is how you install WordPress. Relatively, I mean, it's complicated as far as, you know, the first time you do it. But essentially, you need two things. You need the XAMPP development environment you can get from XAMPP.org. Then you need the WordPress installation you get from WordPress.org. You install XAMPP. Then you check your XAMPP installation by starting Apache and going to your browser and making sure you can actually load the page, load a page on your browser through Apache. Then you check your PHP on that web page, that default XAMPP web page. Then you go in and start your database server, which is MySQL. Then you go back to your website for XAMPP, your Apache website. Go to PHP My Admin, log into your database, create your first database. Then you're going to copy your WordPress installation files into the htdocs folder of c colon slash XAMPP slash htdocs slash whatever install folder you want to, whatever you want to call your website copy your WordPress installation files in there, and then you can access that website at the browser level. So that's, that's an overview of how all of this works, essentially, how you install WordPress. Uh, it can go from anything to a lot of headaches to no headaches when you first did the install. So I strongly encourage you, if you run into issues during the WordPress installation, go to pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community and ask questions. I've been working with WordPress for a long time. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And uh, this is really kind of an exciting topic for me in general because I, I just, I know WordPress well just because I've used it so much. So let's go ahead and get to your questions. If people have any questions, feel free to enter them into the chat now at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash live. And I will go ahead and answer a couple questions that were asked earlier on. And uh, as the questions come in, we'll see how we do. If we don't have any additional questions, I'll go ahead and close for the day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. So Craftkick says, I wonder if Weebly is a good basic website host maker. Weebly is decent for very, very basic functioning. WordPress is far more advanced and far more powerful than Weebly. Anything that's free isn't worth it. Um, I'm pretty sure Weebly is free from what I understand. Uh, usually you usually want to make sure you're going through like HostGator or Bluehost or a really reputable web host if you're going to be doing anything WordPress. WordPress is resource intensive. So it's strongly recommended that you go with some kind of a host that's worth it. I use Bluehost.com. Actually, if you go to PCMTechUp.com in the top right corner and click on the link, I'll get credit for the referral. But uh, I strongly recommend doing Bluehost if you're going to do that. So check them out. B Hunter says, I tried out WordPress when I saw your first tutorial. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Kazuki says, I haven't had a good experience with Weebly. Bluehost and HostGator I've been happy with. So Kazuki at least confirms my suspicions. Craftkick says, I can put my cyber power to use now. Definitely worth checking out, Craftkick. For anybody who's interested in WordPress, it's definitely a very powerful tool. And, and, I, and I can't um, underemphasize that at all because it's, it's essential. It's essential to any web developer now. So that's all we have for the show tonight. Looks like we have no more questions, which is a good thing. Apparently, I did it well enough for people to be able to follow me. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Again, this is the PCM Tech Help Show, the PCM Tech Talk Live segment of the PCM Tech Help Show. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. And don't forget to stop by the website at PCMTechHelp.com and subscribe on YouTube at PCMTechHelp.com forward slash YouTube. And we have all kinds of fun things going on at the community. That's where we all hang out outside of the show. And that's at PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community. 
These links are so difficult to remember, I know. So make sure you stay tuned and tune in tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be talking about just yet, but we'll have some fun, I'm sure, and we'll talk about anything tech-related and talk about what's going on in the news, and we'll have some more interesting things to discuss on different topics. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern Sharp. Have a wonderful evening, and thanks for coming out, and I'll see you guys next time.